The main two areas in blue that I've pointed out are, are effectively what we are promoting as, you know, the open park. It's still an open park. It's open 24-7. It's free, which is, is still quite amazing to us that people think. Obviously, huge commercial, you know, uh, kind of beast on our doorstep. God forbid that we should ever disrupt any Saturday traffic. Um, and then also, you've then got the borough boundaries on there. So the land still belongs to the boroughs, but we manage it for them and on a day basis I kind of like die through health and safety processes but I think it's just understanding that that it is a very sensitive development of a publicly owned um, piece of land you know this was once known as the wilderness it was beautiful it was overgrown it was derelict it was unregulated it was what it was then and, and what it is now which is this so that was you know a guerrilla project done by the office of subversive architecture probably in again like 2007 um obviously the blue hoarding that went up around the olympic park and, and just this really simple you know it's the human curiosity what the hell are you doing behind that fence on our land for a long time we have had an extremely uh, extremely limited vision of what the game consumer was é, e hoje cada vez mais a gente entende que essas pessoas, elas uh, que são quase todo mundo, elas conseguiram desenvolver uh, habilidades sociais muito uh, fortemente. And today we also understand that gamers who are practically everybody have been able to develop um, social skills um, intensely. Que existe uma busca pelo uma coisa que a gente chama de hibridismo. And the use of technology on the body, which we refer to as wearable tech, is also very intensive. Nada mais, nada menos do que a vontade que as pessoas estão de viver no mundo real de novo. But without uh, giving up all the information that networks give you. Um pouco diferente. Eles querem participar do processo inteiro, de fazer parte de um grupo e de querer ser identificado dessa forma. To me, this is really all about uh, wanting to belong. And also, uh, a lot of the selfish gene theory, which uh, establishes that everything is about competition. This whole thing, the process of empathy and understanding people, has a lot to do with... Tem muito a ver com verdade, com o que a gente chama de nu frontal. Principalmente para essa uh, história de... Today I have learned some things with you that uh, uh, I'm going to share back in Brazil because I think um, here you, you transform things uh, easier in projects. And this is our synopsis. We are organic, we are <laughs> natural beings, so we have to use it for better. Um, change our bodies to, and change ideas. This picture, because I think we're trying hard to do the same. So we have to realize and not to be like zombies doing the same thing. Like uh, it had changed a lot. People uh, have just realized that it can use the, the public space and that it's important to use and they, they, that they want a better uh, public space. But what is happening there is a big uh, lot of food trucks. It's really nice. A lot of food trucks are uh, getting people to park, to street and uh, We start from the empathy, and then you go back and choose the idea. It's a process that turns into a project. Design thinking has to um, have an idea that it's human design. So that's it. We have to put our heart in what you do, and everything is going to be better. Okay, thank you. So I've never really been involved in anything that I would describe as profitable. Um, for sure, but I've certainly been involved in, um, yeah, I think what, I, what, I, what I've been involved in predominantly is curating networks of partnerships that produce programs that output innovation in terms of business models over a long period of time. And I, uh, I look forward to when they become environments where we can create cultures, not just put products and services into them. That would be good. Well, it is a business model for the digital era that was created before the digital era. 
that is probably more culturally relevant now in terms of the way that it works than actually was then. Canson's methodologies were replayed large um, for the work that I did um, on the Cultural Olympiad, which is the programme called um, We Play. And Shinkansen was a digital collective that ran from 89 to um, 2004. And it had a focus on um, working with performance and um, media artists. And it was an early pioneer in developing um, interfaces for full body telepresence in virtual spaces. So we're obsessed with um, equality. We're obsessed with being a, we call ourselves a people's theatre. 30 pieces of work in 30 homes, stories in London, um, and by the end we got a landscape of how London felt through these stories. The other thing that was interesting for us was that we worked with actors in London who were being artists. And in London, you've got an actor who needs to be told what their script is, they need a director, but we had to explore how an actor in London becomes an artist and makes their own piece of work. How we listen to our audience before we even do the show. In their homes. And you, you saw there one of the things that we called it a gift. When we went to and asked them why do they want this work, we got a whole range of different reasons why people wanted us to do home theatre in their homes. Many years, and I want something to help heal the wounds of those two people who I love. Mm -hmm.